like the title says, I installed an Apple TV here in my BMW, and uh, you'll have to apologize for my sick voice. I've been sick for a couple weeks now, but I'm still going to get through this video. Um, I know I've been kind of teasing the Apple TV here on the channel and on my Instagram for a couple weeks now, so um, I'm going to have a full in-depth review after I get a chance to use this thing for a while, but um, I just wanted to give you guys a preview here of um, how it works and what it does, and maybe you can decide if you want to get one of these for your car. So before I get into it, I just want to give a huge shout out to Keys Motorsports for sending me this stuff to review for you guys. Um, I'll link everything down below just in case anyone's interested in checking this out for yourself. And then the stuff is made by a company called Beamer Tech. They specialize in BMW electronics, things like speakers, sound systems, and multimedia interfaces like the one that I'm about to show you. So the way that this works is it replaces your factory iDrive screen with this new one. This is what they call the Vivid screen. And it has twice the resolution of your factory iDrive screen as well as better contrast and a little bit better color rendering. Then behind your uh, screen there they have what's called the uh, multimedia interface, the MMI, and that's what the Apple TV will plug into. The multimedia interface has a toggle switch that allows you at any time to switch between iDrive and the Apple TV. So uh, in my case I just mounted it here behind the steering wheel. It was kind of out of my sight, but it's still easily within reach. So you just press that and that will switch to your Apple TV signal. And then once you're in there, it just connects to your phone's um, uh, Wi-Fi hotspot. And then you've got the Apple TV remote and it works just like an Apple TV in your house. You can see here we've got Netflix, Hulu, ESPN, YouTube, anything that you can do on a regular Apple TV is now here in your dashboard in your car. Pretty cool. Along with the toggle switch, you can also see this little wire sticking out right here. This is actually the receiver for the Apple TV remote, and you can really put this anywhere in the car that you want. It just has to be kind of within visual range of uh, the little thing on the front of the remote here. So I just put them both behind the steering wheel. It just made wiring a little bit easier, and uh, from my driving position, I can't really see either of them. And don't worry, I'm going to link all of this stuff that you need down in the description below. It's kind of sold as a kit, but there are a couple different things that you need to buy to make all of this stuff work. So again, all of that's going to be linked down in the description. So as you can see, the Apple TV is running off of my hotspot here on my phone. So you're just going to want to go into your phone settings and make sure that your personal hotspot is turned on. And then anytime that you get into the car, the Apple TV should automatically connect to your phone after you do the initial setup. But just one thing that you want to keep in mind is that you want to make sure that the hotspot on your phone is turned on first before you turn on the car because if you try turning on the car first and then turn on the hotspot the apple tv is going to ask you again for the network settings so just um when you get in the car just make sure that your hotspot is turned on and it should connect automatically for you now one really important thing to note here as far as using the internet hotspot the lte signal from your phone is obviously if you're like me and you're one of the last people on earth who doesn't have an unlimited plan for your phone um, anytime that you're using the internet here on the apple tv it will count against your mobile data plan so uh, just keep that in mind before you stream like a three hour long movie so once you've got your wireless hotspot up and running you're ready to use this thing it's just like using an apple tv in your house i don't know why i'm putting it at the screen it doesn't really matter but uh let's see we'll go down into YouTube here and we'll see if we can pull up a video. All right, it's been snowing all week, so I think it's time to put these VMRs into storage and I'll switch them out with my winter set. So for me, one of the coolest features of this is the phone mirroring. So if you have an iPhone, you can actually mirror whatever's on your iPhone screen onto the iDrive screen. And uh, it just makes it a lot easier, especially if you're trying to search for something, being able to actually type on your phone's keyboard rather than trying to use, you know, the little Apple TV remote to kind of scroll through the alphabet. To me, the phone mirroring is just a little bit um, better. So I'll show you how that works. So in order to do the mirroring from your iPhone, what you're gonna do is you're going to um, pull up from the tray on the bottom and where it says screen mirroring right there, you're just gonna hit that and uh, it should say Apple TV. Just click on that and it'll connect to it. And then you can see it's kind of mirroring here up on the iDrive screen. Now, if you have a bigger iPhone like mine, this is a six plus, you can actually um, orient it this way and then it'll also orient that way on your iDrive screen as well. So one of the coolest things about being able to do this is since I'm just mirroring whatever's on my phone, I can actually go into Google Maps and now I have Google Maps showing up on my iDrive screen 
and the turn-by-turn -turn directions are going to play through the BMW speakers. So um, again, being able to type on this keyboard is really handy. I'm not even really sure what this address is, but we're going to get directions. To me, this right here is one of the coolest features. I'm just using Google Maps, but obviously you could use Waze app or Apple Maps or any maps that you feel comfortable with. And you're gonna have not only the map displayed here on your big 8.8 inch display, but the turn-by-turn -turn directions are gonna play through your BMW speakers since it's just plugged into your aux port. So that right there is awesome. It really makes the car feel 10 years newer. You know, it just feels like a modern day car instead of having to use the old uh, really clumsy BMW iDrive navigation. This is just a much better solution. So Keys Motorsports already has a really in-depth step-by-step installation guide for this. Um, he does it on an E60 in his video, but for the E90, it's basically identical. It's the exact same process. So um, I figured uh, rather than spending an entire day kind of duplicating his video, I'll just link his video down below. It's actually what I use to install this. And um, it's really not too bad. It took me and my dad about two hours to put in. Um, but I think that most people will be able to do this. If not, um, I'm sure that most audio install uh, shops will be able to figure this out, no problem. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Definitely subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Uh, like I said, I'm going to have a full in-depth review of the system. I just wanted to have some time to play around with it first and really get to know it before I review it. So subscribe and maybe turn on notifications so that you don't miss that video. And then also, I'm going to be working with Beamer Tech very shortly to do a uh, full upgrade of all the speakers in the car. So if anybody has a BMW and you're looking to upgrade your BMW speakers, that video is going to be coming soon as well. I should have the speakers in the mail sometime next week. So again, just subscribe to the channel and look forward to those videos coming up very soon. All right, and then one last thing before I go, um, in case you're following my wheel lock dilemma from last week, as you can see, I got the lock taken out. I went to the BMW dealership, paid them $140. I know it really sucks, but at least they got it taken care of. And uh, according to the BMW service tech, apparently this is a very common issue that they deal with all the time at that dealership. So uh, what he said is they use um, an impact wrench or something and they chisel out um, inside the lock. There's like a little pin. They chisel the pin out and then they just drill through it. They've got like a whole routine procedure that they've got down pat from doing it so many times. Uh, but they got that done with. And then when the car was in there, I also had the brake fluid changed because it was kind of overdue. So uh, got all that stuff taken care of, got the winter wheels on. So this is all set and uh, lessons were learned from this. Um, if you're gonna use wheel locks, definitely put some kind of anti-seize compound on the lock. That way you don't have to, you know, damage it trying to get it out. And then also uh, what a lot of people said is just be really careful when you put them in. Maybe don't put the full amount of torque on the lock one, just kind of hand tighten it. That way when you go to take it off in the future, it'll be a little bit easier for you. So really happy that that's taken care of. It sucks to have had to pay $140 just to remove a bolt. But uh, I'm not gonna run those locks anymore. Um, in the springtime, I'm gonna do a wheel stud conversion and I won't have that problem. So that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, the links for all the Apple TV stuff down in the description. You guys know what to do. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.